What's up everybody, I'm Jason and welcome back to more tips and tricks for the Canon EOS R5. So in this video, we're going to start talking about the wireless functionality that's built into the camera. Well, I already talked about the Bluetooth function functionality last time. This time we're going to talk about the Wi-Fi functionality. Now, normally this would be the part in the video or the start of the video where I tell, uh, add my usual disclaimer about how much of what I'm going to talk about applies to other Canon cameras and so on and so forth. However, this video is going to cover performance testing and the specific performance capabilities and power usage of the R5 and the specific implementation in the R5 and therefore that doesn't apply so we're only talking about the ES R5 now as I alluded to we're going to be covering two things in this video I'm going to get to doing setup and stuff but as I was putting this all together I realized that was going to be a huge video in and of itself so I've decided to break this up into a couple of pieces so in this video we're going to talk about what capabilities exist in the R5 for wireless uh, Wi-Fi capabilities, and we're going to talk about some of the performance testing that I have done with the Wi-Fi in the camera. So let's start with the performance or the capabilities overview. So the EOS R5 has an 802.11 wireless radio system. It supports the A, A, C, B, G, and N wireless uh, 802.11 protocol subsets, or using the new Wi-Fi numbers, it's Wi-Fi 4 and 5. Now, this also means that it has two operates on two frequency bands, so it has 2.4 and 5 gigahertz radio frequency capabilities. And then, of course, you run into the usual gamut of things that Wi-Fi systems should support. So it is capable of operating on infrastructure mode. You can put it on a wireless network, connect it to the wireless network in your office, on location, etc. In that mode, it's capable of operating with WPA2 PSK encryption, as well as unencrypted, and I believe it also can do WEP. The camera can also operate as a standalone access point. So if you're out in the field in the middle of nowhere, you and you want to have the wireless capabilities because the high bandwidth stuff like remote live view and full camera control do require wireless that if you want those capabilities and you don't want to have trek an access point out to where you're going then you can have the camera stand up in access point mode and connect to it from other devices so acts in access point mode it's it's it supports the usual gamut of security stuff, so WPA2, WPA, and WEP. Now, the wireless, as I said, is requirement for the higher-end functional capabilities of the camera. So this includes remote live view and remote control shooting through either Canon's EOS utility on a laptop or a PC or Mac laptop or desktop or whatever, as well as Canon's Camera Connect app on your smartphone. It also provides support for FTP and secure FTP transmission or, or uploading of images, as well as the ability to directly connect and upload images to Canon's image.canon cloud photography service. Now, I will, of course, get into the details of setting up and using most of that or all, almost all of that. I won't be doing the image.canon stuff, but all of that stuff in subsequent videos. This video, as I said, we're going to focus on performance testing. So let's talk about performance. So I had put together a, a fairly straightforward test, at least I thought it was fairly straightforward, to look at how well the camera performed at transmitting images. And I approached this from two aspects. So first of all, I wanted to use Canon's EOS utility. It's their own native protocol. It's their own internal application. I wanted to see how well that worked. Additionally, since the camera does support FTP, I wanted to see how well the FTP transmission stuff works. Does it fare as well? Is it slower, faster, whatever? As well as I wanted to look at both the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz network performance. So in theory, 5 gigahertz networks should be able to provide, especially since the camera claims to support AC uh, networking, up to 500 megabits or in fact in, in excess of 500 megabits of bandwidth for transferring. So in theory, 5 gigahertz operation should be like extremely fast. So for all of these tests, a little bit about the configuration of what I did on the camera. So 
storage on the camera for the images was a CF Express card, specifically a 256 gigabyte ProGrade 1700 Gold. So this should not limit me in terms of read performance. The cards rated for 1700 megabytes per second reads. As I said, I wanted to test both the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz networks, so I did repeated these tests multiple times on the two different frequency bands. The receiving side of the tests was a MacBook Pro M1. I did this for both FTP and the EOS Utility transfers. Now, unfortunately, the way Canon's EOS Utility works, I had to time the transfers with a stopwatch, so the timing is perhaps a little less accurate than it might be if it was able to be done internally. For the FTP tests, I calculated the speed based on the transfer time and data size in the logs on my FTP server. Let's start by talking about the direct transfer tests. And these were, I think, quite interesting for me. So I ended up repeating these tests several times, both in infrastructure mode, so connected to my own access point and directly connected to the camera as the access point. And I'm kind of split on the, the performance. So I think the performance could certainly be better, the, but the performance, at least in 2.4 gigahertz mode, was not horrific. So in the three tests that I did, it's, I should point out for all of these tests, I copied the same six images. So the data, the amount of data transferred for each test was the same. So for the first 2.4 gigahertz test, I was about 25 ish feet from my access point and I was talking or communicating through a wall or separated from it by a wall, a fairly substantial wall uh, at that. And the total transfer time for the six images was 35.91 seconds. That works out to approximately 3.2 megabytes a second or 25.6 megabits a second in networking terms. Now, I wanted to see if, uh, even though 2.4 gigahertz is generally not sig significantly affected by the, the situation that I'm in with just the one wall in the way, I wanted to see if direct line of sight made any major difference. And in fact, it did. So taking the camera out into the other room, putting it within 10 feet of the access point with direct line of sight, transferring the same six files, the transfer time cut down to 21.98 seconds, which is a pretty substantial improvement. That worked out to be about 5.2 megabytes per second or 41.8 megabits per second in wireless network terms. Now, in access point mode, so having the camera be the access point and connecting directly to it from the laptop, uh, three feet apart on a desk, the same desk, the transfer time was 29.43 seconds. That works out to be about 3.9 megabytes per second or about 31.2 megabits per second. Now, none of this is extremely good. The camera was syncing at approximately, I believe it reported approximately 70 megabit per second link speed, but this is within the realm of reason for 2.4 gigahertz uh, N or G networks with, you know, the frequency or the setup and range and capabilities of within that I was working. Could be a little better, could be a little worse, but again, wireless is, there's a lot of variability in wireless anyway. So moving on to the five gigahertz test, I repeated the same test, same situation as the first test, 25-ish feet to the access point wall in the way, same six files, Transfer time was 5 minutes, 26.38 seconds. That works out to be about 352 kilobits per second or about 2.8 megabits per second. Not very good at all. In fact, just shockingly bad. I repeated this test in direct line of sight. In fact, this was the reason I did the 2.4 gigahertz test in direct line of sight, and the performance was essentially the same. In fact, I didn't even complete the test. The performance was so bad, I was two, a minute and change in, and I had only copied one file. And it the, the short of it is, is the 5 gigahertz performance does not look especially good from the camera. So to verify all of this, I also repeated the tests. As I said, I wanted to look at FTP performance. So I repeated the tests using FTP instead of the Canon Connect performance or Canon Direct Transfer performance. Same six images on the 2.4 gigahertz network. I transferred the images in about 24.45 seconds. Uh, works out to be about 4.7 megabytes a second or about 37.6 megabits per second, which is completely in line with the 
numbers that I was seeing for 2.4 gigahertz uh, Canon direct transfer from that location. On the 5 gigahertz network, same kind of or same kind of poor performance. Same six files took three minutes and 52 seconds to transfer. So it's a little bit better or a lot better actually than the direct transfer uh, work. That works out to about 495 kilobits per second or 3.9 megabits per second in networking terms. But this also underscores some of the variability that I saw on the 5 gigahertz network that I really didn't see on the 2.4 gigahertz network. So when I was connecting, when you're using the FTP upload on the camera, it reports the link speed on the back uh, or on the camera's display. And very consistently, the 2.4 gigahertz camera would report a link speed of around 70 megabits. I would assume that this is the same thing, approximately the same link speed the camera was seeing with the EOS utility direct transfer as well. With the 5 gigahertz, uh, on the 5 gigahertz network, the link speed reported on the back of the camera would range from zero, like completely dropped, to 250 to 300 megabits. Now, for whatever reason, even when it was saying 250 megabits for the link speed, I never saw anything approaching that fast for transmission. Now, the other thing I wanted to look at with respect to the wireless on the camera is power consumption. And power consumption is something that I tend to be like overly interested in maybe on mirrorless cameras because, well, it's their biggest downside, I think, right now as a whole. They wolf down battery power. There's a lot of things that would be interesting to test, but I needed a way to test something that was sort of a fair comparison. So for this test, I looked at basically the remote live view streaming. So I performed three tests. I did a minute test run with the camera just locally, with the radios off, just locally seeing how much power the camera used to display the live view on the rear LCD. I repeated that test using the 2.4 gigahertz network, and then I repeated that test again with the 5 gigahertz network. So with the camera off, or with the wireless off, and the camera simply displaying the live image locally, the camera used about, th I used an average of 3.54 watts of power for the 60 second test. It switching on the 2.4 gigahertz radio and connecting remote live view to a tablet uh, on that, I ran a test, it ended up being about 65 seconds and the camera used about 4.15 watts average power consumption over that time period. The final test was at 5 gigahertz, and the 5 gigahertz test ran for 60 seconds again and consumed about 3.9 watts of power over the test. So performance conclusions. The short of it is, is that running the camera with 2.4 gigahertz seems to be a better solution than running at 5. And this is the case even with an unobstructed line of sight to the access point. Now, the question that comes to my mind with this is why is the 5 gigahertz performance so bad? Why, why is it not faster? Like clearly it says the link speeds are capable of being 200 or 300 megabits per second, but you, I never actually can see that kind of transmission or kind of performance. Well, there's a couple of things that I think could be going into this. So the first thing could just simply be the antenna design and placement. Another potential possibility is it is just a poor implementation of 5 gigahertz in the Murata Wi-Fi chip that a Canon appears to be using. It's also possible that there's some kind of interference going on inside the camera. The final option could simply just be transmit power limits. So there are some limitations on 5 gigahertz transmit power based on channel and whatnot. However, as I saw with the power consumption tests, the 5 gigahertz channel does use less power than the 2.4 gigahertz channel. So recommendations, and I know this is kind of sort of a little bit ahead of things because I haven't talked about how to set anything up. But in general, for my testing with the camera, it seems like the best choice for you to do is use the 2.4 gigahertz network when you're connecting to a wireless network that has both frequencies. Generally, the 2.4 gigahertz is going to give you better penetration through walls, so it'll be more reliable. It'll give you better performance at long distance, as well as even at short distances with clear line of sights to the access point. At least that's what I found with my camera. Now, as for whether you use FTP or the EOS utility to transfer your images over wireless, 
you know, that's going to be entirely what best fits your use and your situation. So I'm going to wrap this one up here. Next time, as I said, I'm going to look at connecting the camera to your computer in more detail, well, to your wireless network and a computer in more detail. Uh, in the third video, I'm going to look at some more things with FTP, I think is the plan, at least for now. So if you found this useful or at least interesting, let me know by hitting that like button. Share it if you know somebody who might be interested in this as well. And if this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you're not already. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.